Hey everyone, this is Tyler from Craft and Tailored and welcome back to another episode of Under the Radar. As you can see, we have a new set, we're in a new office. If you are in the greater Los Angeles area, please feel free to make an appointment and come by. Today, uh, my Under the Radar piece is going to be a 1957 NACRC Pearl 600. The reference is 100 slash 61. And I want to bring this one out because I think it has just like a myriad of really cool aspects to it down to its aesthetics, its case construction, uh, the movement inside of it. So one of the first things you notice when staring at the dial of this Enacar, of course, other than the applied Enacar logo, which is really cool, is you see the swooping ultrasonic text. And ultrasonic was kind of synonymous with Enicar during this era. They put ultrasonic on a lot of their smaller watches. Um, this is a little bit more sporty, but you don't see it quite as often on, on say like their Sherpa graphs or Sherpa GMTs or Sherpa guides. It's kind of like a reference to the cleaners that are used by watchmakers still today. They're called ultrasonic cleaners and they use a very high frequency ultrasonic waves, which essentially vibrates the solution that the watch parts are in at a very high rate and that allows the gears and the miscellaneous watch parts to be cleaned wholly. Enacar went a step further to coating each watch part with a chemical coating that allowed it to retain its lubrication a lot better but also made it a lot more resistant to corrosion and wear and this kind of became a staple within their wristwatches and you know, greatly increased the lifespan of the movement between services. So essentially the ultrasonic system for Enacar allowed the purchaser or the wearer of the watches to go a longer period of time without getting their watches serviced, which is a great advancement and also very, very cool. Another really cool anecdote that I want to go over with the C-Pearl 600, it is in the later part of the, the 1950s, Bolova was producing a wristwatch for the US military, more specifically the US Navy Experimental Diving Unit, the EDU. While that Bolova was under development, um, the US Navy performed official tests on the Rolex Submariner, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, and actually the Enacar C Pearl 600 was included in those tests. And it wasn't even an issued watch. It was actually just a favored watch by Navy SEALs and other, you know, Navy divers at the time. So they included it in the test to see, you know, how well it performed. There's actually a, a really cool article at Worn and Wound, and we can link that in the description below that kind of goes over that history of this watch and it's just really cool so check it out so now that we've kind of like gotten the history covered on the c pearl 600 i kind of want to go over this watch specifically it gives you a very very sporty feel because of like its dial layout it has these really big blocky triangle markers it's heavy, thick radium loom that's on there and it has very interesting bold hands the way the dial is laid out is to be you know, highly visible. It's not the largest watch, but it does feel very masculine in its presentation. And I, I think that aspect of it paired with the way the case is constructed, kind of with those like swooping lugs, the chamfers that kind of like bevel the very top round part of it. And it's, you know, larger than normal crown kind of make for a watch that gives me early Explorer 1 vibes, 6610 or 1016s from kind of like that gilt era that get those gilt dials that sort of mat out. It feels very utilitarian, but also at the same time, it feels very versatile. I feel like I could wear this watch with a suit. I feel like it will slide nicely over a cuff, but I also feel like I can like dive off a cliff in like the Southeast of France and like come up out of water onto like a jet ski and like go off into the sunset or something. It really gives you like that you can go anywhere with this sort of vibe with this watch and I really like that. The dial on this one is super cool. It has sort of like this sort of matte finish. The text is bordered and has like the silver paint and cursive. It's absolutely beautiful and 
the condition of the dial alone is is amazing. You don't see any loom degradation. All the radium loom is there and it's intact. And you know, one thing that is kind of quirky about this watch, but I like it a lot, is the sweep seconds hand kind of has this blocked construction. It's just something that is very unique to Enicar. You don't really see many other brands doing something like this, and it kind of just stands out because the hour and the minute hand are are pretty normal. They're they're not like overly exciting, but they are still cool themselves. So with the aesthetic and versatility of this watch, and also it's very cool history and just, you know, the, the history of the Enicar brand as, as a total and the whole ultrasonic line that they were producing for such a long period of time. I think that these watches are kind of under underappreciated in, you know, their standing in the market. I think the best time to buy them is right now. And a car is really starting to pick up steam within the vintage watch community. They're incredible watches. They're more sporty watches, they're 40 millimeter watches, they're compression case watches all the way to the Sea Pearl 600s and these sort of smaller dressier pieces underneath the, the ultrasonic line. And a car has an, an incredible history. We actually have a book here about it that we really like. It's a time for a change, discovering vintage and a car. This is just a really cool in-depth book that kind of goes over the, the history of the brand. So if you're able to get your hands on this, I definitely suggest it. It is a definitely a very good read. But I think only time can tell what, you know, Enicars do within the marketplace. But I think with this watch, you know, price underneath the $4,000 range is a lot of bang for your buck, especially, you know, from the era it comes from. And I think that we'll only really see these go up from here, especially as Enicar grows within the vintage watch community. So with that, I wanna say thank you for watching. Uh, welcome to our new space. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Craft and Tailored. If you have watch questions, we are here to help. Drop us a line at info at craftandtailored.com and we'll see you in the next one.